Good morning, DCC family, and welcome to our DC Today Show. Uh, it's Friday, October 16th, and I'm Sean Stanton, the Adults Ministry Pastor. And I'm Britt Hemphill, Children and Family Ministries Pastor. So let's get into our announcements for today. This Sunday, Dan Stevenson will be joining us as our speaker. The title of his message is, Who Wants to Be Transfigured? taken from Luke 9, 28 through 36. Again, reservations for our in-person Sunday worship service are no longer needed. It's first come, first serve, and we have overflow seating in the chapel if needed. We are also looking for a volunteer to help uh, Jennifer Freimeyer uh, schedule the bookings for our DCC Today program. So if you're interested, please contact the church office. Also, we are still looking for a secretary to assist in our front office. For uh, inquiries, please contact Colleen Price at the church office. So, today's fun fact. Our last one. we got to make it good. <laughs> so, is it, are you starting? Or is it I will start. Okay, good. <clears throat> Question is, what is the world's smallest country? You can't answer. I, you already know. I would have gotten it wrong if I would have tried to answer, but I do know, so I won't even try. Let's ask Shane. Shane, what do you think? Liechtenstein. Wrong. <laughs> good thought. That's good. The Vatican City. Vatican City. How, and how big is Vatican City as a country? 0. 0.2 square miles. That's just crazy. It's a All really right. Small what do you country. got? All right, this is an excellent trivia question, really. Fun fact, trivia. Born into a family of Dutch Americans, who was the only U.S. president to speak English as a second language? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And the answer is Martin Van Buren, <laughs> who was our eighth president. Okay. There you go, Van Buren, Dutch, there you go. Okay, so. Today is our last day to host the dailies. You want to do? We, are we doing mugshots today? Do you know? I think we should. Yeah, let's let's do that. So, Brett, this is our last day of filming for the DCC today. So, I thought it'd be cool if we took some time and just thanked our church family for being so supportive over the last few months. Yeah, for sure. I think it's a great opportunity to uh, speak some words of encouragement to those of you that are viewing. And um, I talked about this in church some weeks ago. But uh, speaking of Timothy's local church, Paul wrote this. They, he said, they are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future. That's 1 Timothy 6, verses 18 and 19. And we've seen this in action from DCC in special ways and under extraordinary circumstances these past six months. The DCC family has shown us as a staff their richness in good works, their generosity and their readiness to share. It's been a beautiful testimony to us. And so we just want to say thank you for uh, your care and goodness. Yeah, we've been showered with support, thank you cards, emails, smiles. It's just been a lot of months of difficult times and our church has just been so supportive and it's just made our job so much more uh, satisfying yeah. yeah, it's been nice. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Amen. Thank you indeed. It's definitely been an adventure of faith. We've been blessed by all of you through your prayers, your giving, and acts of kindness. Thank you so much. And now here's today's interview. Thanks to Uncle Sam. I was able to go to a couple of universities while I was still in the Air Force. I, I went to Trinity University in, for two quarters while I was at San Antonio, 
And then I was uh, transferred from Randolph Field in San Antonio to uh, Hawaii, where I was stationed at Hickam Field and was able to go to two quarters to the University of Hawaii. Uh, then when I was discharged in 1949, I went back uh, to Denver and enrolled in Denver University. And thanks to the previous credits that I had accrued, I was able to graduate in 1952. Now, <clears throat> while I was uh, in seminary in 1950, I mean in the uh, University of Denver in 1950, the Korean War broke out. And so my counselor said, now you're going to be called back in probably. Uh, Glenn, do you want to go back in as a, as a sergeant? That's what I had gotten out of the Air Force as. Or would you like to have a commission in, uh, in the Army? Uh, well, I had served enough time to know uh, that the officers usually ate better than the enlisted men and uh, had a few other privileges. So uh, I said, well, yeah, having a commission sounds like a pretty good idea. And so I enrolled in ROTC, and because of my previous military service, I only had to take ROTC two years and get a commission. And uh, so in 1952, I graduated uh, and uh, had a commission as a second lieutenant in the uh, Quartermaster Corps of the U.S. Army and uh, was sent to Fort Lee, Virginia, where I uh, uh, took... Uh, some months of training uh, for the Quartermaster Corps and uh, as well as uh, uh, because so many of, of uh, the young lieutenants were being killed in the Korean War, uh, they also gave me infantry training. And uh, I expected to be sent to Korea. But my first assignment after finishing th these uh, months of training was to the Army's last mule pack company. Now, mules were used in Korea uh, in the, uh, at the beginning of the Korean War. Of course, they had been used extensively in the Italian campaign in World War II up in the, up in the mountains. And so I was assigned as a platoon leader. I had uh, 100 plus mules and about 70, 100 and, supposed to be 150 mules plus 75 uh, mule skinners. And I was the uh, platoon leader. Uh, all the officers in the mule pack company were issued uh, army horses. So I was a mounted officer and uh, uh, was attached uh, to the 10th Mountain Division and uh, spent most of my time up in the high country, uh, either the mountains in, of Colorado or the mountains of uh, Wyoming. My, my last assignment was uh, up in the mountains of Wyoming, the Wind River section, and uh, we were, our, our mission was to establish a supply center at the, the, the base of, of Mount, uh, oh, the big uh, highest mountain, highest peak in uh, Wyoming which had a huge glacier, the, high, the biggest glacier in the Continental 48. And there the uh, 10th Mountain Troops were going to uh, take glacier training, and it was our mission to pack supplies in for them. And uh, so I stayed there for three months, uh, and then my time with the mule pack, uh, my six months with mule pack was uh, finished, and uh, the Korean War was winding down, and instead of being sent to Korea, I uh, was... Uh, ordered to uh, Germany and spent the rest of my uh, career in the Army uh, as a uh, young officer in, in Germany. Thanks for joining us. It's been great to be with you. Have a great day today.